Sense of intersection, I would argue, is natural law. So, so going to the political side, like, what's your views on Donald Trump and also, you know, me, Joe Biden? Like, what's the good, you know, I mean, from Donald Trump? What's the good from Biden? The same thing that I tell all my kids. Every human being is an infinitely valuable, one-of-a-kind masterpiece created by God for a mission. <laughs> so in other words, because they exist, they're fundamentally good because God can only make good things. Um, as humans, we're all flawed. Um, I don't consider myself to be, oh, this party is good and this party is bad. I look at the issues. And at the core of this issue is, does this person respect life? In other words, does this person recognize that every single human being from the moment of conception until natural death has a right to life? And the truth does not depend on my will. So in other words, if we decide to do something and we're wrong, those actions have consequences. And just because I made the decision doesn't mean I have the right to harm another person or to do something wrong. I, I think it was Alan Keyes maybe who said, we must never have the right to do what is wrong. And, and here's the problem, because when you abandon God from the question, there is no right and wrong. Frederick Nietzsche wrote a book called Beyond Good and Evil, and it's really a disturbing book if you look at it, because he's saying, well, I'm a super smart ph philosophical guy, so I really get to go beyond good and evil because I have the brains to make my own decisions and be part of this elite, right? And that, that philosophy has won the day. So that he, he was one that was an atheist, didn't really believe that God was a reality. And so, but he, he would argue that, oh, but morality is important for, for the little people, you know, for the people that don't know any better like me and the Superman and the super philosophers. But these are the, these are the philosophies that influenced these horrible scourges on humanity, Marxism, communism, um, national socialism, Nazism, all these scourges came from this idea that I, as an elite, know better than anybody else, and it's my truth. And if I can use my will to power, then I know what's best for, for everybody. And you can't tell me that I'm wrong, mm. because my will is sufficiently strong enough to say, it doesn't matter what you think. But see, that's the problem in our world. It does matter what we think. Because if we're not thinking well, we can do all kinds of bad things. Mm -hmm. Fundamentally, we can hurt each other. We cannot respect each other, and we can destroy each other. So do you think that Biden is taking us backwards, you know what I mean, to the slavery mentality? Um, and with Donald Trump, he was pushing us to be like financially, you know, established. Well, if, if there's a difference, and this would not be the, uh, this would not be the way people would see it or articulate it, um, but there's the difference between real freedom and compulsion. So in other words, if a person has an idea, uh, whatever those complex issues are today, right, whether it be surrounding transgenderism or homosexuality or, or whatever, um, Trump would be of the mind, hey, if you want to do that, you believe that, that's fine, but just let everybody else who doesn't think like you, okay, that's, that's fine. It's a free country. So there was this enshrinement of liberty. But it seems like today now, if you look, for example, if you look at the statistics, since this abortion ruling came out, for example, over 150 uh, pro-life centers have been attacked and the FBI, FBI does not seem to be pursuing it. So it doesn't seem to be like equal, equal justice under the law. See, it, it doesn't matter what you believe. We need to protect the rights and fundamental beliefs of people. But but if, if, if you don't land on the particular party in power right now, you are at risk of being incarcerated or, or, or jailed or canceled, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you're not thinking like they are, or if you're not saying what they say, and I hope this doesn't cause you to get canceled, <laughs> Calvin, yeah. on, yeah. on, your, on your thing here. Yeah. But, but, but I mean, it's like if, you, if you're not thinking and, and you don't have this compelled speech and you're not saying what they want you to say, then they try and shut you down. It, here, here's the funny thing to me. When you look at socialism, communism, they all say, look at our material, do this, but don't read the Bible. Don't read these guys. You don't want to read anything like what they're saying. 
but that's not like it when, when you're formed to be a priest. Mm -hmm. I'm told to read Marx. Mm -hmm. I go back and actually read Engels and Marx and, and read Nietzsche. And I read these guys because you can see the foundations and, and where they lack. Um, there's no fear if we follow mm -hmm. the truth. If we pursue the true, the good, and the beautiful, that's how we heal our divisions. But we, we have to get beyond this idea that there, there is truth. Yeah. You know, there is God. Uh, I believe it. I'm betting my life on it. And, and what does God want? He, he wants me to treat you like I want to be treated. And he wants us to respect and love him in the same way that he respects and loves us. Mm -hmm. What's so bad about that? Do you think that um, it's more people that believe in man and materialistic things versus God? Because uh, from what I see, you know, uh, people worship things. They, they idolize people um, and you don't see you don't see people glorifying God the way he's supposed to be versus, you know, if you're famous. Uh, John Paul II uh, wrote this incredible thesis on what he called the theology of the body. Theology is just the study of God, like biology, the study of bioorganisms. Theology is just the study of God. And he's saying the theology of the body. And he's looking at the core of man. We call that anthropology, right? And so Christian anthropology is that, that God created us to be a fundamentally good person. And if we look inside of ourselves, that's going to lead to goodness. Um, if you look at some anthropologies, they see that we're, we're like a savage and, and there's no, we're a blank slate and there's not any kind of intrinsic goodness in there. So anyways, to summarize his thought, every single one of us as a human want, wants three things, pleasure, possessions, and power. We like that stuff. That's how we're made. But we have to try and, and choose and this is a choice. Do we choose God or do we choose man? Do we choose um, the person who's pure of heart or do we want to be the person of lust? And lust is not just about sex. You can lust after power. You can lust after things, kind of the points that you're looking at. You know, in our humanity where so many people are lusting after prestige and popularity, number of clicks, all these different things, right? Yeah. You can lust after that popularity. So the person of, who's pure of heart in a marital relationship, they want to bring joy to their spouse. If you're pure of heart, you want things, but why? So that you can share them with others and alleviate their burdens. And then if you're pure of heart, you want to be in control. You want to be the guy calling the shots, but why? Because you're always thinking, how can my decisions help those who are subject to my authority? Mm -hmm. It's not about what, what's going to help me. It's, it's how can I help them? And I heard something, my sister sent me a little text, and I, it's kind of an interesting point, and it really does speak of our society. It was a professor who had everybody in the classroom blow up a balloon with their name on it you know, wrote it on a marker and they blew it up and they put them in the hallway and there's like a hundred balloons out there. And he said, go find your balloon. And nobody could do it. He said, okay, let's try this. Whatever balloon you pick up, find the person whose balloon it belongs to and give it to them. Within five minutes, everybody had their balloon. Hmm. See, and that's the key. It's about thinking about other people before ourselves. And if we do that, that just engenders a goodness and a collaboration. Hmm not cutting out some segment for myself. And, and it's, it's what Christ said, you know, die to oneself. When we practice the virtues, that's a word that nobody hears anymore, right? A virtue is simply just a good habit. When you practice the virtues, you become a virtuous person. In other words, it's easy to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Now, the opposite of a good habit is a bad habit. Yeah. And those, called, those are called vices. You probably know a few of those, right? Okay, so what happens when you practice the vices? You become vicious. And where's our world? How is our political landscape? Is it, do you think of a virtuous landscape when you look at how politics is today? Or do you see it as vicious? Vicious. Vicious. And, and that's what we need to get away from. You know, we need to get away from attacking each other. I mean, right now, when you have one political faction saying that... Um, half the population are extremists. I mean, that's the talk of totalitarianism. That's the kind of talk that Stalin or those people would use to try and divide people and get people to hate each other. So would you...